And if you care about an opportunity that you didn't get, chances are you're supposed to be there. Chances are that there's something in there that you want. If you ever get turned away from an opportunity or you, you know, just not successful and it doesn't bother you, it ain't for you. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Tea Time with Letitia. It's me, Letitia. And in this video, I am drinking some pineapple strawberry white tea. Now, out of all the white tea, I mean, I'm sorry, out of all the teas, meaning like green, black, and white, white tea is my favorite tea. And that's because it's not as stringent or it's not as um, harsh of a taste as green tea and black tea can be. And I don't know, I think it's just a lighter tea. I got this tea from Hawaii. So it was made in Hawaii, processed in Hawaii, everything in Hawaii. So it's like a special tea. Actually, this is the last tea packet. I saved it for y'all. White tea is that it's good for compact from, it's good for combating skin aging and it's also known to help with weight loss. So in today's video, we have a different guests than what we normally have. This video is going to be our medical school edition and I am going to let the guest introduce himself. Hi Leticia, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jakari Moton. I'm a rising third year osteopathic medical student. Um, I attend NYIT Common at Arkansas State University um, and actually I have tea as well. Um, it's not from Hawaii, I'm um, not that bougie, but it is a yogi tea. It's yogi tea stress reliever. And I also like these teas because they, all, they leave quotes and I'm a big quotey. And it says, happiness is an accomplishment. And I can agree with that. Uh, happiness is an accomplishment. I think sometimes we don't recognize what truly makes us happy until it's often too late. Um, and this tea is making me happy, so. Happiness is an accomplishment. And I got it from Walmart. I didn't go to Hawaii. Hawaii didn't come to me. I got it from Walmart. And so I started saving the quotes um, mm -hmm. in a little glass jar. And I have that exact same quote, except for that quote is sitting on my desk. And it's like hanging by the string down oh, wow. so that I know when I'm going through a stressful day that happiness is an accomplishment in itself. Right. So just because my experiment didn't work is not the end of the day <laughs> or right. end of the world. And getting into today's topic, uh, I wanted to talk to you about how you use your purpose and the fact that you have identified your purpose to keep you going and keep that fire within you as you do something as stressful as medical school. Yeah, I think you have to have a solid foundation or solid idea about who you are and where you're headed because oftentimes, you know, we can fall victim to the imposter syndrome. Hey, I don't belong here. I shouldn't be here. I'm not good enough. Maybe, you know, people where I'm from don't really understand. You know, my family doesn't understand what I'm doing. They just keep asking me, you haven't graduated yet or you haven't done this yet. So I think keeping in mind the purpose of why you even started. And actually someone told me this when I was an undergrad, they said, don't forget why you started. And those words resonated very, very well with me because I was at the time working um, as a waiter at a nice hotel. And of course I was very frustrated because things never go as they should when working in hospitality in New Orleans of all places. He said, don't forget why you started because I was there but wanting and dying to be here. And now that I'm here at all times, I don't feel like I want to be here. So. Uh, you know, remembering why I started, like, what was my purpose? And I, I, I can refer back to a text. So I like to read up on, um, like, sociology and, like, public health journals. And uh, Dr. Joyce King, uh, she's dean, I believe, uh, at Georgia State University of the Graduate Department of, I think, African American Studies and Sociology, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but she said in one of her texts, as it was, in the abstract, it says to interrupt the calculus of human unworthiness. And I think that's my mission. I want people to know that from, from my understanding and my experience, sometimes being African-American 
and having a bout with your health. African-American people have not always known that they can manage what they're experiencing. It doesn't have to be, you know, a death sentence. Like we're behind the curve in how we trust and, and incorporate medicine into our daily lives. And I think it's, I don't want to say it's a reflection of how worthy we feel for ourselves, but I think worthiness is a reflection in how well you adapt to the situation around you. And I think medicine is one of those ways that we show ourselves that maybe we don't feel as worthy as we should to be alive, which is weird, but I think it's important for African-American people to feel just as worthy, to feel just as comfortable, to feel just as educated, to feel like they have access to all the other resources, every resource that they need to have a true and full medical experience. And by true and full, I don't mean a cure, but the tools that they need moving forward or the assistance that they need moving forward to make an informed decision, to have better health, to have a better chance. And that's where it starts. Sometimes not having a chance, not even having a chance is an unworthy concept. So I want to restore the worth that African-American patients feel while they're going through things that are subject to or relative to their health. Yeah, I think that that's very important. Um, you yourself, just as a Black male, getting your medical degree is, uh, in my opinion, aiding to restore that, right? Because we go to the doctor, who are we seeing? We're seeing white men. And in history, doctors have not been as caring for us as what they needed to be, and they've been white men. So in theory, you know, you see someone who looks like you and, you know, you would have more hope and more belief that that person would care more about you and your well-being and not just, mm -hmm. oh, this is just someone I have to treat. The cure is in the connection. Because if I don't connect with you, like even if I have a professor or someone I'm working with, if I don't connect with you, it's hard for me to, harder for me to work with you. If I don't connect with you, it's harder for me to listen to you. And actually there's this TED talk. Um, she's an educator. I forget her name, but she's really, really awesome. She says, kids just don't learn well from people they don't like. <laughs> they don't. I, I don't. I know I didn't. If I had a, a teacher or a professor at any point, then I just did. Or if I didn't even like them that day, that day is a loss. So connecting with people really does matter. I'll actually be uh, entering the hospital in in August, so starting August 1, and I'm very excited. Um, I'll be in Memphis, so I'll get a good mix of everything because Memphis is kind of like New Orleans where we met. It's a melting pot of sorts, so there's a little bit of everybody. Um, so, and that's who I want to connect with. I want people to know that they can have somebody they can talk to, they can have somebody that they can say, you know, anything with. Because retrospectively, those small things is what makes all the difference. It leads you in a different direction. It changes your clinical suspicion. It makes you think, oh, if that's what we're dealing with, we need to do something just a little bit different or something totally different. So yes, the cure is in the connection and I want to connect with people so that the medicine can do the work. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. Congratulations <laughs> on your August 1 start date Thank in you. Memphis. Um, so you talked about your purpose and how knowing your purpose was, is important to you. How did you figure out your purpose? Shoosh. Uh, I think, like, even around the time we met, I, um, undergrad was a tornado. Um, like, you know, it's filled with times of being unsure about yourself, unsure about where you want to go, having the anxiety and the pressure around you to make a decision, move. Um, you know, it's just not all, uh, a to B to Z, you know, it, just, it doesn't all add up in that way. And I became impatient because I knew the goals I had for myself, but I wasn't sure about how to navigate it. Um, so in identifying better what my purpose was, I just had to, I, I just never stopped, you know. Um, I graduated undergrad. I did an extramural research fellowship with NIH at University of Texas Medical Branch. I got my master's. And then I entered medical school. The two years prior, I applied to medical schools three times. Um, the two years prior, I was on the, was on the wait list and nothing happened. And I was like, this has got to be some voodoo. Can we cuss on here? No. But it has to be something crazy. And I felt 
both times or after both times, I said, I'm so close. Why would I want to stop? But I did want to stop. I'm going to make that clear. I was just like, you know what? I don't have money. I don't have time. I have no other degree to get. So, you know, I did a post I got a master's. Like, there is nothing else higher than me actually being in medical school. And I was like, look, I've done the research, done the leadership. Like, I check all my boxes, done the volunteerism, you know, got good letters, you know. I've taken the MCAT five times. I've done it all. I've done it all. But also, I didn't give up in that. So every time I took the MCAT, I had a score increase. Well, not always, but I was doing it to increase my score to better give myself the best shot that I could. Um, I think sometimes, and I, Tish told me something in senior year in college, and I don't know if you remember, and she says, y'all, I, I quote, she says, sometimes moving slow is better than not moving at all. And I was just like, Okay, Tish, I thought about that for a long time because I was moving with my mind at a very slow pace because I knew that I'm smart, I'm capable, I'm worthy, I'm supposed to be here, I'm confident about myself, I'm confident about my abilities, but I was, in my mind, moving slow. In retrospect, I was not moving slow because as I got here, I've done some great things, right, some notable accomplishments, right? I've been class president for the first and second year class. So for my class, for my first year and second year. And actually, today's the first day I assume the role and position of SGA president. So I think the time to grow for me didn't just happen in undergrad. Like, I was still growing. I was still working through my postback. I was growing and still working in my research fellowship. And I think that made me know more of who I was. I spent more time in that, okay, let's figure it out phase. I've contemplated, I have a, a, a foolproof plan for everything that could go right, everything that could go wrong. So basically I was just, you know, brewing like this tea. I was brewing. I took some time. I had to brew and really, really, really put, put pin together. Okay. Why do you care so much? Why do you care? They told you no. And if you care about an opportunity that you didn't get, chances are you're supposed to be there. Chances are that there's a apply for the next opportunity. Chances are that there's something in there that you want. If you ever get turned away from an opportunity or you, you know, just not successful and it doesn't bother you, it ain't for you. It bothered me. Am I, I was literally like losing sleep, drinking more, working out more. So yeah, just because you going through something, you don't just pick up all the toxic habits. You pick up the good ones too. I was working out more, trying to, you know, relieve stress. I was drinking more to relieve stress. Like, you know, I was just reading more to relieve stress. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's made me better. And I don't think the purpose came all in one night. I think the purpose was from one of my life experiences and knowing how African-American people have experienced medicine. That's a definite undergrad definitely made me into most of what I'm doing. It changed my life, Letitia. I'm not sure if you know, but it really changed my life. You know what? And I really do believe that because I remember us being an undergrad and, um, you know, you were our Mr. Diller. You know, you came in just ready to engage, ready to be involved. Like, and I could see that you were like moving with a purpose. You were moving intentionally. And I hadn't gotten to that point yet. Like I look at, um, you know, where I was at my point and where you were. And then now like I got to that point when I got to Penn State. So within like my second year, you know, mid end of first year, second year, going into third years when I really got my feet on the ground uh -huh. and I see like, you were there in undergrad and yeah but also i think it's about just just try you know a lot of people don't try they'll let the dreams die inside of it i think that's that's the most mind-boggling concept they can have everything and just want to sit on it or just because they're scared i've never really been scared i've had to not be scared for a lot of things i never really just had like fear for like oh maybe I won't get it I've always was like I can do that and I think everybody gotta have to I, I can do it spirit and they have to wait for the opportunity to tell you hey no no you don't tell yourself no before you get to an opportunity you put your best foot forward all the time 
If you are not speaking volumes right now, I had to intentionally, because I was at a point where I would pull myself out of the race before anyone else took myself out, because I was like, I'd rather be the one to do it than let somebody else do it. As crazy as that sounds. And, and you might have been the best one, the perfect one. <laughs> You know, and now, like, looking back at it, and even now, I will say that I'll find, like, moments where I'm like, you know what, I I'm doing real good, you know, maybe it's time for me to just, uh, take myself out, but, like, I'm like, no, no, like, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stay in my lane, stay in my track, and I'm gonna just keep moving as I am, I'm not gonna be wavered, I'm not gonna be pushed to go faster or slower, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing, and, you know, if I get pushed in another direction that's okay but it's not because I was afraid and I just decided to stop doing what I was doing mm -hmm. exactly totally agree totally agree and you talk about um just your purpose being and this is me uh paraphrasing so correct me if I'm wrong but you know the connection to the medicine right you want to be able to connect people so that they have access to the medicine where do you see your purpose taking you? Or do you have a vision of where your purpose can take you? Yeah, so I want to practice medicine. I'm interested in family medicine. So I want to do everything from deliver babies um, to having geriatric people, patients, and, um, you know, helping kids get their physical exam so that they can, you know, perform in schools. I want to be there for all of that. Family medicine really, for me, really means that you intricately tie it to the family um, and you know what's going on. And I want them to feel like we are family and that we are connected. So that's what really drew me in. Um, as far as my future goals, yeah, I want to become a physician, but I, you know, I own a singly head, single handedly made my own um, tech startups. It's intended to dissolve the isolating nature that medical students may experience because, and like in my office, it could just be just me for 16 hours a day um which is fine but also does it have to be that way i know that i'm a little bit more inspired and more encouraged when i study with other people or when i'm connected to other people okay the cures and the connection once again so as a final question for someone who is just getting into you know trying to figure out where they want to go in life the direction their purpose mm -hmm. where is um like if you could put it into three steps of how they can start what would you say? Find a mentor. Mentors will change your life. Find a mentor that you know cares about you and that's not going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you, this is how you get it done. I think also you got to assume responsibility over your life. Um, and it's so funny I say that because when I turned 13, one of my friend's parents' dad He's like, you know what this means? I said, yeah, I turned 13. He said, you're responsible for all of your own sins now. I said, I thought I already was. <laughs> but I think in that you also need to, you know, assume accountability. Like some things don't happen because you're the reason why it doesn't happen. I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but I am what messes me up. I get in my way. I mess me up. Um, recognizing that and preventing it. Don't be, don't, don't be in your own way. And like when taking risks, that looks like, hey, I'm going to drive to this conference or hey, I'm going to carpool to this conference or hey, I'm going to stay around for this uh, presentation we have at school. You know, take risks. Do things that you know nothing about. You know, ask questions you know nothing about because you will know nothing about it even if you aren't there and you, at the end of the day, or if you don't ask those questions, you're still going to not know. So take those risks, jump, try things. Finding a mentor, asking questions, take risks. Three good ways to be successful. All of that information, I think the very last thing that you said really resonated with me was take risks. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to learn that no is not the worst thing that can happen. So being told no um, so I think that that's something that you have to hurdle, you have to get over in order to be able to take those risks. It's just mm -hmm. forget about being told, no, just take that chance. So yeah, thank you so much for this special edition, this uh, medical school, professional school edition of Tea Time with Letitia. 
you know, thank you for having me. This has been great. I hope, you know, I was able to help someone. Um, and again, if their students are interested, um, they can contact you to contact me. I'm all for it. Find a mentor. Ask good. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> and what else was the third one? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I got sidetracked. Ask questions. Find a mentor. Is that on your own way or was it one other? Take risks. Take risks. Yes. Take risks. Find a mentor and ask questions. 